Now that you've been exposed to the concept of entropy, it's time to take a look at entropy in more detail. Most of which we know about entropy has been learned by studying compounds in what we call an isolated system, which is a chemical reaction system like this double-headed flask here, in which neither matter nor energy can enter or leave the system, meaning that the mass of all particles within and the amount of energy that they have remains constant. Under these conditions, particles will naturally adopt a more disordered arrangement or configuration. And we can see that here. The only reason why the gas particles in this double-headed flask remain trapped on the left-hand side is because we physically put a barrier to stop them from migrating to the other side. When this barrier is removed, it, there will naturally be a greater movement of particles from the left to the right simply because the particles in the left hand side are going to collide with each other and push each other into an area where there is empty space. Biology students will recognize this type of movement as particles moving from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration like on the right hand side here. And when this process is done, we see approximately an equal number of particles on each side, and we can assume that if there are an equal number of particles on each side, that the rate at which particles move from left to right must approximately be equal to the rate at which particles move from right to left. This concept is what we call diffusion, and it's a very simple and visual example about how entropy leads to the movement of particles in such a way where they become basically evenly distributed within an isolated system. We can also see a number of patterns that occur because of entropy. The first and easiest to see is in state of matter and how entropy is related to temperature. If we consider any single element or compound, we know that a gas will have a higher entropy than the liquid form because gas particles are not bound by a specific volume. Gases always occupy the volume of the container and because gases have a much higher kinetic energy than the particles of the liquid form of that substance and likewise particles in a liquid form will have a more disorganized structure than particles in the solid form which have a constant volume and a constant shape. We know that aqueous particles will also be more disordered than their solid form but less disordered than gases because aqueous particles are trapped by the volume of the liquid itself. So as we can see, there is a direct relationship between kinetic energy and entropy. The more kinetic energy particles have, the more entropy they are going to have, which is why gases have a higher entropy than any other state of matter. Therefore, if we want to increase kinetic energy by increasing the temperature, an increase in temperature is proportionally going to lead to an increase in entropy because you're increasing the amount of unpredictability of the movement of particles themselves. Next, we can look at the effects of entropy at the molecular level. Now, if we consider these two hydrocarbons here, methane and propane, if you said that methane has a lower entropy than propane does, we can look at why this is. So a trend that we see is that molecule size increasing, or as molecule size increases, entropy is also going to increase. Now, when we talk about motion of molecules, we can talk about the translational movement, which is the up, down, forward, backward, and side to side motion of particles. But pretty much all particles can do this, especially since methane and propane are both gases. But propane is capable of a type of motion that methane is not because it has a greater number of bonds. And as long as we have single bonds, not double bonds and triple bonds, single bonds can actually rotate around each other because this carbon atom here will be spinning 
around this carbon atom here, and that type of motion is not possible in smaller molecules like methane. Therefore, larger molecules have a greater amount of entropy because they have a greater amount of motion or a greater freedom of motion and therefore have a much more unpredictable structure. We can also examine this pattern when it comes to the bonding structure. The general trend that we see is that the entropy of solids is going to increase as the intermolecular forces or the strength of its intramolecular forces, which are of course what we call bonds, as the bonds get weaker. The best example to consider for something to visualize is the difference between diamond and graphite. This is a good example because they're both purely composed of carbon. We know that a diamond is the hardest substance on earth and is physically impossible to break unless you smash it against another diamond. And we can see that every single carbon atom within the diamond is bonded to four other carbon atoms in this very predictable structure that we see here. In graphite, that is not the case because we see graphite forms multiple sheets like this that are held together by intermolecular dispersion forces like this. This is why graphite can be broken with just your fingers, whereas a diamond needs another diamond or a laser in order to break it. In conclusion, we can say that graphite has a greater entropy because it has a more unpredictable and less organized structure because diamonds have much more and much more regular bonds that hold all of the carbon atoms together. We can also observe a similar but slightly different pattern that occurs in ionic solids. Now, magnesium and oxygen atoms are held together by an ionic bond made of two ions with a positive 2 and negative 2 charge, whereas sodium chloride are held together by an ionic bond with only a positive and negative 1 charge. The conclusion here, since a positive 2 charge is stronger than a positive 1 charge, and the same goes for negative charges, magnesium oxide has a stronger ionic bond that is holding the ions together, and therefore we would expect its entropy to be lower than sodium chlorides because the bond is stronger, and therefore it makes the structure more predictable. Now, ionic solids we know can dissolve in a polar substance such as water, and this is what we observed in the previous video with the dissociation of sodium chloride. When a, an ionic solid dissociates, it goes from a very predictable ionic crystalline structure in which every cation is next to an anion, which is next to another cation, next to another anion, and so on, to a very unpredictable structure where the ions are scattered seemingly randomly around the solution. The conclusion related to entropy is that the entropy of solids is going to increase when the solids are dissolved in water, and for this reason, this is why aqueous particles have a much higher entropy than solid or liquid particles, because their organization, when dissolved in water, is much harder to predict. Our final note, we're going to compare the entropy of aqueous and gas particles. So if we consider aqueous NaCl, let's say that we have an unspecified amount of NaCl that is dissolved within a specific volume of water, and whereas if we look at a gas, let's just consider good old oxygen gas in here. Now, the reason why gas particles have a higher entropy compared to aqueous particles is a greater freedom of movement. Aqueous particles can move about relatively freely within the water, but we know that they're going to have a predictable organization to some degree because we know that the negative pole on water's dipole is going to be facing sodium, so that's a fair amount of regularly, and conversely, the positive pole of water is going to be facing the chlorine side, and we know that aqueous particles can only move within the solvent that they're dissolved, but gases have no such restriction. Gas particles can travel 
outside the con the container and therefore have a greater freedom of movement than aqueous particles do. And for that reason, the rule as far as entropy of states of matter goes that gases have the highest level of entropy, followed by aqueous, followed by liquid, followed by solids. Now that you've seen the general patterns that occur based on state of matter and temperature and molecule size as far as entropy goes, the next video will focus on predicting whether entropy can be used to drive a chemical reaction to completion.